Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 28th, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. We're going to scroll all the way back towards yesterday with that troughing moving across the area here. And I'm going to point something out very important that seems to get a lot of controversy here on some of the weather pages. But as we scroll through the day there yesterday, you can see the troughing kind of moving off across to the east here. And then we've got this moisture moving in aloft here with this next system that's going to be moving through as we go through this weekend. But I want to show you something here because if you notice, you got this moisture in the upper levels of the atmosphere, you can actually see the contrails here. And this doesn't mean that these planes are actually spraying chemicals in the air on purpose here. These are just condensation trails from the planes here. You notice they show up when the moisture here starts to roll in here. And they don't show up right here, but there's still planes flying right there. It's just that the moisture is not supporting these contrails here. These are not chemtrails here, folks. And as we scroll off in towards this morning, you can see again the contrails showing up as the system comes in with its next round of moisture. You can kind of see that if you could see above that cloud layer there across some of western Washington. But those are when those contrails show up. So uh, yeah, I, I, there's a Cliff Mass put out a weather blog here recently about the same thing here. There's no conspiracy. This is just showing up when you start to get these bigger moisture amounts here and the relative humidity is higher in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So moving on now, seasonably warm weekend coming up here Saturday and Sunday. You can see the return for some chances, some showers here for eastern portions and there's hoop fest going on over there in eastern Washington right now near Spokane. Uh, and you can see dropping those temperatures down maybe a little bit bit here and 10% chances thunderstorms in the Spokane area and breezy. Take a look at today. Thunderstorm outlook off into the eastern portions of Montana. Nothing across the Pacific Northwest. Expect it today or tomorrow right now. And then Sunday, we're going to reintroduce some of those chances. More on that here in a moment. Here we go with Seattle. 66 degrees here. 73 degrees is the average high for this time of year. So 7 degrees below average. Two hundredths of an inch of rain out there. Kind of a cloudy day out there. Might get some sun breaks today, though. Now taking a look at Hoquiam. And this is 64 degrees yesterday. 65 the average high for this time of year. 500 of an inch and if you remember yesterday June 27th 2021 103 degrees in Hoquiam an amazing temperature there now looking at composite reflectivity if we scroll through the day today you'll notice some of that moisture moving in here with this weak system as we go through tonight and on and through Saturday and as we go through Saturday you can see there's going to be some off and on precipitation as we go through the probably the afternoon and evening hours as this moves across the region then we go through Sunday and kind of see some of the thunderstorm activity maybe across eastern Washington here as well and still some residual showers across the area. Looking at the European, so we're going to scroll all the way out. This is Friday afternoon into Saturday afternoon. It does show a little bit stirring here, so you can't roll out a lightning strike maybe somewhere there across the Cascades. But as we go through Sunday, you see that chance start to increase for eastern portions of Washington, Oregon there. And as we go on in through Monday afternoon, maybe something of a repeat as it pushes off to the east with that system. So taking a look at the European a little efforts, the GFS on the right, we have something interesting coming up here as we're going to start to build a ridge here, it looks like, as we go into the early portion of July. So you can see the trophy moving through this weekend with that system. But then look at the ridging that starts to build here between the European and the GFS here on the right. This was last night's run. You can see them building this pretty stout ridge here. Still some model disagreement on where the axis of this ridge is going to set up. And you can see the GFS building a pretty strong ridge as we go on in towards next weekend. The European definitely further west with that ridge. And we scroll out into the future a little bit more here. And the GFS wants to swing a trough through here as we go towards July 8th and 9th time frame here. And we'll break that down. We're looking kind of far out in the forecast here. This is over 10 days out. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. But we still have some model disagreement for sure. Now this is the European Ensemble Control versus the GFS here on the right. So on the left, you got the European. There's that troughing this weekend. And you can see this ridge building up here. And this goes out 144 hours. And you can see better agreement here between the control run that ran last night here versus the artificial intelligence on the one I showed you prior. But strong ridge here setting up right off the coast of California. This would definitely start to increase our temperatures as we go towards the 4th of July upcoming here. So right now we're looking pretty good as far as nice weather for the 4th of July. And you can kind of see that reflected here. The European as of yesterday afternoon did show a few warm days here for western Washington, western Oregon and not bad temperatures out there as well. But, you know, we'll be breaking this down day by day because it's going to be changing back and forth a little bit here. You can see the GFS likes to start summer here as it kicks it off somewhere right around July 3rd or 4th here and keeps things pretty darn right warm here for western Washington as we go on into the mid-portion of July. Here's the ensemble runs. You can see as we get out towards the 
fourth and fifth, we start to get a little bit more squirrely with some of these ensemble members here, much more disagreement. Pretty typical when you start looking that far out into the future here. But there are some warm temperatures showing up. Some of these days getting up into the 80s, maybe towards 90 degrees. We'll see how that trends. Mm -hmm. This is the six to 10 day temperature outlook. You can see uh, we're starting to, we took away the below average here and it's probably going to be trending above average uh, over the next couple of days. Again, this was issued yesterday. Here's a six to 10 day precipitation. There's eight to 14 day, a lot of the west above average average but this will be changing here as always and this 8 to 14 day precipitation as well so looking at the daily two meter max temperature on the national blend of models as we look for today a little bit of a bounce back here warm up probably going to get some sun breaks for some areas saturday a little bit warmer sunday not bad and then you know we got this system that's going to be over the top of us as we go through monday kind of a troughing there keeping things a little bit suppressed here from getting too warm just yet but look as we go into july 4th we start to really ramp things up look at some places uh, along the Willamette Valley could be pushing 90 degrees, 90 plus uh, east of the Cascades. And look at Seattle getting towards 80, southwest BC towards 80 degrees. And look at Friday, July 5th, nice and warm, some mid 90s, maybe across the Willamette Valley, mid 80s for western Washington. And you can kind of see we stay warm through Saturday, July 6th. And then we'll see what happens after that. Looking at the seven day significant wildfire potential here. So this was issued today. You can see as we go off into the early portion of next week, we're going to get some onshore flow and we could kick off some of these elevated and moderate risks that are going to be increasing here as we go towards next week. Right now, not doing too bad. NW8 showing up with a little bit of moderate there, but not too bad right now. And yeah, again, didn't mean, don't mean to stir up any controversy here. Just like to explain things in a, in a different way here where people might be able to understand it's a little bit better. But you can see, again, the upper level moisture moving in with this system. And that's when those contrails start to show up in the planes. That doesn't mean that planes are also targeting this moisture area. There's planes all the time flying all over the U.S. at any given moment here. It just shows up in the sky when we start to increase the moisture aloft. So just hopefully that works here we'll see what the comments reflect below as we go through the day today but check out the cliff mass blog on the same topic here that was put out recently as well but again you can see that next moisture moving in and the contrail start to show up in that moisture layer as it moves towards our region here so anyway uh yeah uh but otherwise we'll continue to watch this ridge building in here we're going to see how much we're going to warm up the axis of that ridge will make all the difference in just how warm we get here as we go towards the fourth of july as well we'll continue to watch things break things down day by day. Hope you guys are liking the channel. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.